IBM PC 5150 repair part 3 I think and we have scoped the RAM all good lots of data flow in there the ROM same story CPU same story and we're not in the garage and we have data going to these chips all the way up to these three this is this one gets some data but it's a little noisy this one diddly squit this one diddly squit they only receive power and this one gets a little bit and I think I'll remove this one just as a precaution because you never know what's severed under here however that particular line at the end there the front is fine because of continuity however there is continuity problems between say like this particular line or what was the other one I found The line all the way to this one was suspiciously quiet. And it's just little things like that. So I reckon take off these chips, maybe that one, and have a look underneath and any damaged tracks will be repaired using motor wire. Because it's about the thinnest wire I have and, well, scrap motors are not exactly unplentiful. They pretty much grow on trees because motors are used in anything that moves. And I have loads of old motors flown around in various places. Seriously, if you ever want some really thin copper wire, just dismantle a motor. You probably have hundreds of them anyway, so what's one less motor going to do? Right, we'll see you on the next bit of the video, which will be instant for you, but potentially a number of hours for me how time travel works. Houston, we have hit a problem again. This is one of those bastard boards that does not desolder with standard desoldering equipment. My desoldering iron is currently sitting up at university. I think I'm going to have to buy a second desoldering iron by going to my nearest Maplins, which is still a trip up the motorway, but not nearly as far. I can do the whole round trip in an hour, quite easily. So, I'll see you then. Ah, <sighs> why is the solution always spend more money? No busted traces. However, I've socketed all the chips I've removed, and I think it might be time to play musical chairs with some known working chips, and see what that does. This is looking like a new motherboard jobby. Four. We don't even have any video signal being pumped out to CGA monitor. Yep, it's CGA. I made a mistake calling it EGA. That's wrong, that's the next standard up from CGA. Oh well. <laughs> Such is life. But yeah. There is something very seriously wrong with this motherboard. Now we've checked the RAM, we've tried it with different RAM chips. Still doesn't work. We've got data flowing around on the motherboard because we can pick up various clock signals and whatnot and data lines of it of various little doohickeys being pumped around. However, I'm beginning to suspect either you've got some jelly bean logic chips which have decided to pack up and die, or ROM. I really can't think what else would cause this. That potentially the ROM chips have failed, which means, um, has anyone got any ROM chips? <laughs> because I haven't and I don't have the means to even create new I the only EEPROM program I I have is busted and doesn't work properly I do not have an EEPROM eraser and well I don't even know if I have com 
a nice field of compatible EEPROMs. I have a collection of EEPROMs, but they're just random ones I've pulled out random bits of kit here and there. They're not consecutively specific types or memories or whatnot. Yeah, I'm thinking potentially we've got a ROM failure or maybe some Jelly Bean Logic devices have gone. If anyone knows common chips to fail on the motherboard, bang it in the comments. The more information I can gain, the better. Anything that fails on IBM 5150 motherboards, anything that commonly fails, put it in there. Because that gives me something to go on, because currently, well, debugging every single log logic chip with an oscilloscope and a frequency counter, I'm not sure if it's even possible. <laughs> Without some very specific analyzing technology, you know, CPU analyzers. I have nothing that advanced. All my test equipment is old analog stuff. I have no digital test equipment, apart from my spectrum analyzer, which is completely useless for this kind of work. So, any information, any common chips that fail on motherboards, anything that can give me something to go on, because the only other option, which would be quite an expensive and time-consuming option, would be to replace every single chip on the motherboard. Now, most of the Jelly Bean ones, that would not be too much of a problem. But when it comes to specific ones like ROM chips and that, they're the ones which go to the problem. Battery acid was not the cause of death. The traces of fine continuity was good. The ones I thought were broken would actually just went to the other side of the PCB and their continuity was good. So, I'm going to bang this up as part three, I think it is now. And if you've got information, stick it on there. If you can throw in links that lead to sites of other information that I have been unable to find so far, bang them in there. I just want inf as much information as humanely possible because only with knowledge can we bring this thing back to life and potentially it's a new motherboard jobby so if anyone's got any random IBM 5150 motherboards laying around um, I certainly wouldn't mind taking them off your hands that's for certainly sure so whatever people can bring up would be greatly appreciated in getting this thing back to life because it is possible the hard part is actually figuring out what has completely gone to complete l land of the livid dead so any information greatly appreciated any potential parts greatly appreciated what parts fail on these motherboards most commonly I know RAM is a big one but what else there's a lot of chips on this motherboard. That means there's a lot of failure points. Could it be particular capacitors fail? I don't know. I can't test the these tiny little gumdrop caps, which I think are tanalums, but none of them have shown any specific signs of failure. So anything anyone can dig up. It would be nice to get some form of post. We're not getting that. We're getting no data to the graphics card at all. Diddly squit. Zip. The only thing we're getting is a ground signal that blanks it from being completely white. That's when we unplug it. Wee! It's basically just white. And when we do that, it's red and that's not plugged in properly. So yeah, any information would be greatly appreciated. Bloody hell, five minutes of me rambling and pleading that someone has information. I think that's more than enough. Any information? I want it. And I want it now. Thanks for watching.